four weeks ago in Philadelphia. The Giants and Eagles in an NFC East shootout. Four lead changes, 67 combined points. In the end, an overpowering Giants running game as New York took control of the division. Antonio Pierce leads the New York Giants onto the field on a 36 degree windy afternoon in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Giants look to win their eighth consecutive game as they take on their division rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. Kenny Albert along with Moose and Goose, Daryl Johnston, and Tony Saragusa. The Giants thrilled to be back on the football field today following a week of front page headlines. And for the Giants, Daryl, with a victory over the Eagles, a chance to clinch not only the NFC East, but a first round bye. You know, I used to refer to these situations as distractions, but I don't think I can use that term with the New York Giants. Their focus is too sharp. So these challenges that they face throughout the year, whether it's OCU Manora being lost in the preseason or the Plaxico Burris situation last week, time after time, these Giants rise and meet that challenge. And that's because they are the model of consistent execution time and time again. They are very methodical. They are tough to stop, but they're fun to watch. And Darrell, on the other side, it's been an up and down 2008 season for the Philadelphia Eagles. They come in with a record of 6-5-1, and one, but they bounce back following a couple of tough games with a big win against Arizona on Thanksgiving. They're virtually the complete opposite of the New York Giants. Tremendous explosive potential for the Philadelphia Eagles on offense. They scored 31 points the last time they played the Giants, but they only had the ball for 20 minutes. Defensively, the Eagles are going to have to slow this running game down. And to a man, coaches and players alike, they felt they did not play well last time against the run. If it happens again this afternoon, the same outcome will happen. This Giants team is too good. Philadelphia has to play much better defensively. It's the Giants and the Eagles on Fox. The opening kickoff is next. Hey, this is it. NFC East, ain't nobody give us a chance in this again. If we were number three or something like that, don't even matter, because we're number one now for the clinch. First round by the in the NFC East title. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to Giant Stadium, moments away from the opening kickoff as we check in with Tony Saragusa. Goose. Thanks, Kenny. You know, there's two big factors in today's game. One is how Brian Westbrook will play with 10 days of rest. Last week, Thanksgiving, he was the first player in 33 years to rush for two touchdowns, catch two touchdowns, and rush for over 100 yards. The second factor are the win conditions. I had an opportunity to talk to Eli Manning and tell Eli there's going to be between 25 and 35 mile an hour wind gusts. And how will this affect his throwing? He said, Goose, it's not a problem for us. I really enjoy handing the ball off to Brandon Jacobs and watching him run. We have that luxury. All right, Goose. The Giants with a victory today would clinch the NFC East and a first round by in the postseason. The Eagles won the toss but have deferred, which could be a factor later with regard to the win. Yeah, you want to be able to have that win late in the game. These giant Eagle games normally come down as of late to the final possession. So Philadelphia electing to defer, play defense first, and we'll get a chance to see this giant offense. And, you know, the comments by Eli Manning, they are playing with so much confidence right now. And it doesn't matter if you're going to stack the box and try to take away that running game. We've seen it the last two weeks. Eli Manning, very comfortable throwing the football. If you choose the other way, they're going to hurt you with the running game. So it's going to be a challenge for the Philadelphia Eagles. But now you even get to the point where weather. You come to the Meadowlands this time of the year, swirling winds. No worries for Eli Manning. Marcelio well, Hansen holding for David Akers on the opening kickoff, taken out the one by Sonoris Moss. Moss out across the 25 and then tripped up by Akeem Jordan. So the Giants will start from their own 28-yard line, led out by the NFC Offensive Player of the Month for November, Eli Manning. A great couple of weeks 
the last two opponents have come in. They're going to take that running game away. They're going to try and stop this giant offense from being able to pound the ball. And Eli Manning has made them play, pay. You get to this offensive line, and it's, it's a simple offense. It's methodical. They execute it very well. I really feel that the reason they're able to do that is those five guys right there. Brandon Jacobs found a big hole on first down. Akeem Jordan makes the tackle. Jacobs out to the 34, gain of seven, setting up second down and three. And I think the key to this running game will be how does Trent Cole and Juquay Parker play? The Giants are a perimeter running team, and that first game they played, Kevin Boss and Michael Matthews both did a great job on the edges. Those defensive ends for the Philadelphia Eagles have to play better this afternoon. Three wide receivers, Hickson at the slot. Boss went to the left, Tuber to the right. Movement prior to the snap. Gene Steratore, our referee today. Jaquay Parker. He saw Brandon Jacobs gain seven yards on the first down run for the Giants. Giants this season on first down, averaging over five yards per carry. That's amazing. Look at the 10 plus yard runs, 33 of them. Everybody talks about third down and how well you play. It depends on how far you have to go on third down. The Giants stay out of third long because they are so good on first down. This time, Jacobs gains three on first down, tackled by the strong safety, Quentin Michael. We talked about the wind in the open, too, Darrell, and right now, Eli Manning has the wind in his face, so if he's going to be affected by the wind at all, or his throws, it'll be when they're going in this direction. Giants have not attempted a pass yet. Second down and seven. Four wide receivers, Jacobs the lone back. Eli throwing for the first time, and the catch is made by Steve Smith. Penalty markers as Smith is brought down by the face mask at the 48. Personal foul, defense, face mask, number 27. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. That's Quentin Michael, the second Eagles penalty of this drive. Yeah, there you go, Kenny. The second Eagles penalty on this drive. And right now, what's going on with the Philadelphia Eagles, they're giving more opportunities to the Giants. A, a pre-snap penalty with the uh, with the offsides. And now, you know, it's part of the game, the face mask. But, but this, this team is so confident that anything you give them, anything that's going to be a benefit, is just crit it's a critical mistake. Empty backfield, the fullback, Hitchcock. Split wide to the left. Maddox pass caught at the 32-yard line by the tight end Kevin Boss, and the tackle is made by Stuart Bradley. Get a five. That Eagle secondary is really playing off the line of scrimmage from down here, Darrell. You know, Eli's going to go and see that all day long, and they're going to have adjustments just to go and take those five and six and seven yard throws right up to the outside. Well, that's what you don't want to do, Tony. You've mentioned the wind down at, on that field. Don't, don't allow the quarterback to be able to execute short passes. You're not going to have as much impact on that throw as you will down the field. Challenge him to force it down the field. On second and five, the end around to the rookie Mario Manningham. And Manningham is tackled back at the 44-yard line. A loss of 12 yards on the play. This is a very aggressive, athletic Philadelphia Eagles defense. Now, you would think that a reverse would be a great play, but that defense played it as well as you could. I'm sure that, uh, that they would like to have that one back. you got to have that signal. Don't give it to me. Don't give it to me. They've got three guys waiting for me on the other side. A little early in the game for that big of a misdirection play, I think. you got to go and see with this uh, defense how, how strong they're running and running to the ball really well. And I don't think in just a couple of plays that you can go and get a feel for running that reverse. That's why it didn't work. Manningham, third round pick out of Michigan, only his second touch this season. He lost 12 yards. Third down and 17. 
Giants must get to the 27. Manning with time. Throws to the outside. The catch is made at the 31-yard line by Sonoris Moss. So the Giants now facing a fourth down and four. And this is going to be interesting to see what Tom Coughlin does. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for it. I mean, this kick, we watched them during pregame, and this ball was moving so much from left to right that I think a field goal opportunity from that distance is not going to have you much chance of getting three points. The winds are swirling. Fourth and four. Giants must get to the 27. <laughs> three wide receivers. Derek Ward in the backfield. Steve Smith in the slot. Looks like they're bringing the blitz on this one. Here they come. Manning throws. And it's broken up. Sheldon Brown getting a piece of it. Pass was intended for Dominic Hickson. A lot of adjustment at the line of scrimmage. I'm not so sure they knew exactly what they wanted to do. Eli Manning doesn't look like he has confidence that Dominic Hickson's going to be there. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Big play by the Eagles on the end around 12 yard loss and the Giants going for it on fourth down do not convert. So the Eagles start from their own 31 yard line. McNabb over the top and the tight end LJ Smith gains nine. At the end of that play it looks like Eli Manning wants to pull the ball back now on the outside is Dominic Hickson supposed to keep going against Sheldon Brown on the go or is he supposed to come back on the little hitch. Look at Eli Manning right there. It looks like he wants to hold that ball. Now, I don't know if it's because he sees the break on the ball and he's worried about the pick, but something looked kind of funny at the top of that route. Yeah, he never moved. He never kept his arm motion and going on that one. That's why the ball flooded. We thought it was tipped, but it wasn't. How about that play? Fred Robbins getting into the backfield, forcing Brian Westbrook to lose five yards. Not enough credit to Fred Robbins or Barry Colefield on this giant defense. Donovan McNabb knows. The first time they played, who are you worried about? Justin Tuck, Antonio Pierce? No, no, no. Fred Robbins down there in the middle. He controls that whole front. Robbins missed last week's game with a shoulder injury. He's also playing with a broken bone in each hand. Third down and six. Eagles must get to the 41. McNabb rolling to his right. Robbins in his face. And McNabb's pass incomplete. He was looking for Kevin Curtis. Well, the one thing that this Eagle team felt they had to do, we spoke to John Runyon, we've got to keep Donovan McNabb clean. Trey Thomas has got to get back a little bit quicker. He's got speed coming off the edge with Matthias Kiwanuka. That forces Donovan McNabb out of the pocket. Donovan talks about getting into a rhythm. Against Arizona, they were able to establish that rhythm. Against Cincinnati, against Baltimore, they could not. Sam Rocker's punt sails out of bounds. And the ball will be spotted at the 33-yard line. Giants back on offense. No score. Early first quarter. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Eagles three and out on their opening possession. Only a 32-yard punt by Rocca and now the Giants start from their own 33 Brandon Jacobs cuts it back inside Jacobs gaining two out to the 35 yard line Giants perfect against the NFC East this season very dominant and, and look at the last two rushing yards per game 170 average time of possession just phenomenal what they've been able to do and the contrast to that again the Philadelphia Eagles they have not won a game within the division and you see how they struggle with time of possession this offense is built on explosive plays they'll get some points but a lot of times they're not holding on to the ball this defense will wear down during the game Manning on second and eight. Again, looking for the tight end boss, Chris Gokong. Got a hand on it as we check in for the first time today with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Kurt? All right, Kenny, Saints and Falcons. Saints trying to stay alive in the playoff race. They strike off a Falcon turnover. 
Drew Brees and Reggie Bush hook up for a quick 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Back to Kenny Moose and Deuce. Saints with the number one ranked offense, averaging over 400 yards per game. Third down and eight, Giants with four receivers. Derek Ward in the backfield. Giants must get to the 43. Quick release by Manning. Hickson makes the catch, but Sheldon Brown was right there to bring down Dominic Hickson. And when you're going to play that style, you're going to bring pressure, force that ball out quick. Your corners have to tackle well. Eli's forced to get that ball out fast. Get it to Dominic Hickson out there in space. Sheldon Brown, that, he's not going to let that happen. That's one thing you're going to see great by this Philadelphia secondary loose, is They wrap up and they tackle extremely well in the open field. Former Eagle Jeff Fiegels keeping it away from Deshaun Jackson in the first meeting. Jackson did not have a return back on November 9th. He has a chance here. And dives ahead to the 29-yard line. 41-yard punt, five on the return. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Moving forward. By Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. And by State Farm. Proud sponsor of the NFL and the best day of the week. Eli Manning checking out the photos with offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride as Donovan McNabb and the Eagles go back on offense starting from their own 29. Well, I've been there that same position that Eli's been in many times. You go up against a Jim Johnson defense and the Eagles will have to do it the same way because his protege Steve Spagnuolo is on the other side. But you come off to the sideline you're like hey I need to see those pitches. I got to figure out what's going on out there. I, I am seeing something I did not see on film. Three receivers set Eagles went three and out on their first drive. And the pass is caught, taken up to the 36-yard line by Brian Westbrook out of the backfield, gain of seven. Donovan McNabb obviously uh, getting back into a rhythm, playing well against Arizona. Brian Westbrook needs to be healthy. I don't know how long it's been since both of those guys have been close to 100%. Obviously, at this time, Nick Cole gets the start for Sean Andrews this week. A little fire plug there at right guard. Max Gene Gill has had been starting, fractured his ankle against Arizona. Westbrook picks up a first down out to the 40, and the health status of Brian Westbrook really the key to the Philadelphia Eagles on offense. It really has been. In last season, he was able to stay relatively healthy, and I think the Philadelphia Eagles can ride that situation, but when he is not at 100%, and he's been uh, anything but that, the majority of this season it is tough for this offense to get into any type of rhythm. He is too important a cog in this machine. First to 10 from the 40 the end around to Deshaun Jackson. He's forced back by Corey Webster. Now heading back towards the line of scrimmage stripped up back at the 38. So we saw the Giants lose 12 on a reverse to Sean Jackson losing two yards here. Well, and he does a great job to just lose two. That's a great stiff arm on Corey Webster. And now it's kind of dangerous right now because now you've got a guy who's an excellent returner out in space. But look at all the blue jerseys. Retracing, finding where the ball is, and getting over there to make a tackle. And that's one of the last things that the Philadelphia Eagles can see right now is another one of their key offensive guys, their playmakers in this explosive offense. Hopefully that's just uh, a little pit stop getting some new uh, some new tires on those feet. Jackson the rookie out of Cal second round draft pick leads the Eagles in receptions with 53. Jackson getting back up onto his feet. Giants and Eagles scoreless. Second and 12 as Deshaun Jackson remains on the field, split to the right. Four receivers set. Everybody out. McNabb cutting away from Justin Tuck. Pump fake. And he steps out of bounds as he crosses the 40. Gain of two for McNabb. So the Eagles now facing a third down and 10. One of the challenges for the offensive line will be to sort through all this. The Giants walk everybody up. Now you got to know what's coming. You can't turn Justin Tuck loose. He's the one guy you can't turn loose. So you get these crazy looks. 
pre-snap, but you don't want to have two offensive linemen blocking one defender because you didn't understand who was coming and who was not, and always make sure that number 91 is accounted for. You know, and Justin Tuck, too, Moose, he has to really anticipate the scrambling, you know, in, in the backfield of Donovan. He came on too close of an angle, you know, thinking he wasn't going to be able to get out, and uh, Donovan did a great job of avoiding him. But now, under pressure again, got rid of it. Pass was caught at the 44 by L.J. Smith, but Antonio Pierce was right there to make the tackle. Eagles forced a punt. And they are not keeping Donovan McNabb clean. He is not going to be able to get into a rhythm because he is scrambling like crazy. Justin Tuck on this one, looping all the way inside from his defensive end spot, coming clean right now. The stunts, the pre-snap looks have got this Eagles offensive line confused, and they are turning guys loose to Donovan McNabb. Rockers first punt just 32 yards. End over end. Picks it under it at the 19. He bobbled the football on the initial hit by Sean Considine. And Hickson loses four on the return. A 37-yard punt by Rocca. Four and a half remaining, first quarter from the Meadowlands. Giants third offensive possession. They start from their own 15-yard line. Derek Ward, his first carry today. And Ward gains nine close to a Giants first down. This is a nice little changeup because a lot of times when Kevin Boss goes in motion, they run to that side. Now they motion him across. Here comes the counter. A good changeup by the New York Giants. There he is up in the middle. Gets a piece of Stuart Bradley. Then Derek Ward's able to finish that runoff. But there it is again. First down. Now you got second and less than one. Derek Ward just did a great job of finding Boss coming right off his shoulder, knowing that he's going to go and get pushed the size of that guy. The Eagles were impressed with Boss in the first meeting. They felt he played better than they expected. Ward, this time, stuffed for a loss. Trent Cole, the initial hit. Loss of a yard on the play. Well, there, there's a, new, a renewed respect for Kevin Boss from this Philadelphia Eagle defense. You see, he had the slow start the first six games, but you look what he's done the last six. And they, they've got their eyes. They know where he's going to be at. They're going to take care of him. Watch this one right here, Brian Dawkins. You know, sometimes you think it's just a safety. Hey, I've just got run support on that one. It's not one of those big linebackers. <laughs> but Brian Dawkins, he's going to bring it every time. It's a divisional game. It's physical. I mean, you've got to be ready every snap. But the Philadelphia Eagles have, uh, have, have got a lot, a lot more respect for Kevin Boss. The toss down to Amon Bradshaw. And Bradshaw tackled by Stuart Bradley, a yard shy of a first down. They're doing a great job on the edges, Goose. That was two consecutive runs trying to get on the perimeter quick, and the Eagles do a great job both times. They really do. And they know that the Giants are going after their edges and their corners. And uh, the linebackers are also doing a really nice job of recognizing the run, coming up, and at the initial point of contact, going and driving the guys back and making those guys in the backfield make their cuts early. So the Giants have gone three and out on their last two possessions. Eagles punt. Taken out the 33 by Deshaun Jackson. And Jackson upended at the 38-yard line by Danny Clark. Five-yard return, 43-yard punt by Feagles. Well, the NFL on Fox continues following the Giants and the Eagles. Many of you will see the Dallas Cowboys without Marion Barber today as they take on the Steelers in Pittsburgh. That's coming up next. The 8-4 Cowboys, the 9-3 Steelers, second game of our NFL on Fox doubleheader. Tony Romo back in the lineup for the Dallas Cowboys. You can see what he's done those two games since coming back against San Francisco, against Seattle. Much bigger test later today against that Pittsburgh Steeler defense. Penalty markers. Ball start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. First off. That's the left guard, Todd Harriman. How about this, Darrell? Last year at this time, the Cowboys were 11 and 1. 
the Giants eight and four. We all know what happened in January and early February. The records are reversed. Giants eleven and one. Cowboys eight and four. Unbelievable. And that's what uh, that's what Dallas is using as a rallying cry since they've kind of fallen on some tough times with Tony Romo out of the lineup. They looked at what the Giants did last season in their great Super Bowl run. Westbrook on first and fifteen out to the thirty-seven. Gain of five. Tom Coughlin, when we asked him about the first meeting back on November 9th, he said, we have to be ready for this Eagles club. They scored 31 points, and they only had the ball for 20 minutes. Yeah, they are explosive. They are very explosive. The, the big thing, that at times, they're plagued by inconsistency, not just throughout the season, but also during the course of the games. The one thing I've seen from the Eagles over the years is that little bit of lull that they get into each game. McNabb on second and ten firing downfield and the catch is made by Kevin Curtis a spectacular catch by Curtis in Giants territory 32 yard pass play this is a phenomenal catch just take into consideration everything today Aaron Ross runs him all the way down inside gets back onto his route look at that catch kind of a little bit back shoulder goes up in the air it's cold out the ball is slick. There's a lot of things that can affect that throw. And Kevin Curtis does a great job with his concentration at the point of the catch. His Don longest reception of the season. He missed the first six games out with a sports hernia. First and ten from the 30. Westbrook spins into the arms of Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce is watching him from down here on the field. I mean, he is mirroring. You know that well Brian Westbrook in the backfield Brian Westbrook wherever he goes Antonio Pierce has an eye on him no matter where he goes and again goose it's Fred Robbins Fred Robbins tremendous penetration on that makes Brian Westbrook make his cut two two and a half yards into the back when he's in the backfield yeah. second down and 11 three wide receivers Deshaun Jackson top of your screen split to the right off the fake to Westbrook. McNabb throws behind Jackson out of bounds. Marty Morningweg, Andy Reid's offensive coordinator. Third down and 11 from the Giants 31. See how Steve Spagnola wants to defend this. Is he going to have him look at a blitz look and then drop everybody out? Is he going to bring pressure, Goose, and try and jump that hot? I don't know. Looks like they're talking it over now. Looks like they're just going to go and play a little coverage. But the Giants do a great job of disguising. Fred Robbins coming through early. Justin Tuck said the center's doing something with the ball, and for Fred to be right over top of him and not have something influence him to jump that quick. I mean, that, that was pretty early in the cadence. I don't even think everybody was set yet. Encroachment, defense, number yep. 98, made contact with the center, five yard penalty, still third down. <laughs> I didn't see he's trying to jump that. He's trying to jump it a little bit. Yeah. You, you defensive that. guys always trying to sell he something. He saw Jamal Jackson's you are, head come up, and he's like, as soon as his head comes up, I'm going. Little did he know it was probably on two, and uh, sometimes you got to take the good with the bad moves. Third down and six. The Eagles must get to the 20. The toss to Jackson, and Matthias Kiwanoka makes the play. I don't understand that play at all with the penetration that we've seen this Giants defense get all day. Why would you go and run those plays? We saw a crazy reverse right moves from both teams yeah. and then that play. I mean that's that's not a good percentage play in my book. Well we really don't have enough time yet to see how they're playing it on the back side. So I agree with you. It's much too early to see these types of plays. Now the Giants called timeout here to force a field goal attempt into the wind instead of the quarter running out and the team switching sides. It, it just every detail is executed by this giant team. Great coaching, great awareness of the situations, take into consideration the wind conditions, what's going to happen. You know, Tom Coughlin is ready to make this call immediately when the clock is running down. And, and one of the things that 
the Giants team has done all season, really, except for that Cleveland game. They don't do things that beat themselves, and they're prepared for all types of different scenarios. Their attention to detail has been phenomenal all season. This ball should go from the right upright to the left. That's how the wind's blowing down here. 51-yard attempt, David Akers. And Akers connects from 51 yards out. His longest field goal this season. I don't think people at home know how unbelievable of a kick that was right there, guys. That's impressive, Goose. I agree. So now the first quarter comes to an end with the Eagles leading the Giants 3-0. Eagles lead 3-0. Bit of confusion on the field. The officials initially indicated it was a Giants timeout. It turns out it was Andy Reid who called timeout prior to the field goal attempt. Yes, yeah, so let's give all that praise to Andy Reid and his staff understanding the situation in that and, and feeling more comfortable kicking that direction, which is surprising to me, Goose, because I watched David Akers in pregame and kicking the other direction. The, the amount of movement on the ball left to right was amazing. When I talked to Andy during warm-ups, he did say that he knows there's more wind during in the end zone that they were kicking to, but they did have a little bit of wind to his back, probably with the, the, the length of the field goal that it was. He wanted to go and get that little extra wind to go and help Akers out. The winds do swirl here in Giant Stadium. It's not like you know that the wind is going to go one direction or the other. It swirls, especially in the end zones. Giants start from their own 15-yard line, trailing 3-0. Manning going deep for Dominic Hitchin, and it goes through his hands. Well, we just had a great field goal by David Akers, and we just saw a great throw by Eli Manning. So anybody who's wondering how Eli Manning will handle the conditions here at the Meadowlands during the playoffs, you can't put it in a better spot than that deep down the field. Hickson, of course, starting for the suspended Plexico Burris, who has had some huge games against the Eagles since coming over to the Giants. He scored more touchdowns, Burris, against the Eagles than any other player in the league over the last four Third seasons. timeout, Philadelphia. A 30-second timeout. So the Eagles, early in the second quarter, are out of timeouts. We'll go back and we'll take a look. Now, during pregame, you're going to try and figure this whole scenario out for later in the game. Look at the amount of movement on that ball. I mean, that, that is really going left to right, going the direction opposite of from where they attempted that field goal at the end of the first quarter. Now, you go back to what you've watched in that first quarter. We saw Jeff Fiegels punt the ball much better than Sav Rocca with those directions. So I'm thinking that they would prefer to be at that end. If there's anything that's going to help them, it's going to be going the other way. They choose to burn that timeout, give David Akers the opportunity to kick in this direction. And I agree, Goose, people at home just don't know how impressive that kick was. Second and 10, Jacobs. Jacobs to the 20, gain of five. Keep this in mind, guys. The Eagles are now out of timeouts, so they cannot challenge in this half. Well, that's probably a good thing. They didn't do a good job last time they played in their challenges. Andy Reid 0 for 5 this season. <laughs> But the Eagles have used all of their timeouts, so they will not be able to challenge a play for the remainder of this quarter. Third down at five. For Amani Toomer, there is a flag. Sheldon Brown on the coverage. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 24, five yard penalty, automatic first down. An opportunity for the Eagles to get off the field right now. More snaps. Amani Toomer on the outside, number 81.
Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I, I don't know about the hold. You know, just understand that the referees do a great job of calling a game consistently. So now, okay, we're, we're not going to be able to hand check a lot on the outside. It needs to be a little bit cleaner when we're defending on the outside. Understand how they're calling the game, and they normally stay with that throughout the, the entire ball game and make your adjustments right now. Giants have picked up three first downs the game all by a penalty. And now Brandon Jacobs with a first down on his own as Jacobs gains 23. And usually Brandon Jacobs has to go and break a couple tackles. On that particular run, no one touched him till he was 10 yards downfield. That offensive line did a great job of paving a lane for Brandon Jacobs. Let's take a look at it right here. Hedgecock does a nice job of kicking out. There he goes. I mean, you can't let a man of that size go and run free in your secondary moves. You will not win a game if that happens. <laughs> Derek Ward in the backfield. Two tight ends. Ross shifting. Giants from their own 48. Off the hands of the fullback, Hitchcock. As we check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Kurt? You might want to look out for the Indianapolis Colts today against Cincinnati. This is Dominic Rhodes' 17-yard run. Longest touchdown run of the season for the Colts. And they lead it 7-0. Kenny Moose and Goose. India's won five in a row. Host the Bengals today, Detroit, next week. Thanks, Kurt. Eagles lead the Giants 3-0. David Akers, a 51-yard field goal as the first quarter expired. Second and 10. Derek Ward. Ward into Eagles territory, lost the football. Giants recover. The left tackle, David Deal, with the fumble recovery. Everybody hustling for the New York Giants. They get an opportunity to get this ball back. There it is on the ground. Quinton. Quinton Michael had a chance, but couldn't get on. There's Trent Cole down the bottom of the pile. David Deal comes away with it. Mike Patterson knocked it loose. Deal the recovery. Third down at four. Four wide receivers, play clock winding down. Manning with time. He fires, and the catch is made by Hickson, who had one go through his hands earlier on this drive. Dominic Hickson makes the catch, a gain of 13, and a Giants first down. The New York Giants doing a good job on this drive, bouncing back a little bit because they have not looked real sharp. They missed the big opportunity for the big play down the field on that opening play. To Dominic Hickson, they get a good run by Brandon Jacobs, but other than that, it's been kind of kind of sloppy here. Hanging in there. From the 33, Brandon Jacobs. Jacobs looked to turn the corner, tackled by Stuart Bradley. Gain of two down to the Eagles 31. One of the things the Philadelphia Eagles have to be careful with is some movement in their front. As Kevin Boss comes across in motion, watch this down inside. That makes his block easier. That puts a lot of pressure on Stuart Bradley to get to the outside and make that play. If you get number 55 sealed, if you get Stuart Bradley sealed coming to the outside, David Deal just misses him. The potential for a big play again like we saw earlier on this drive. Steve Smith in motion, second down and eight. Penalty markers, Jacobs. Jacobs gains two down to the 29 before he was tackled by Akeem Jordan. Offside, defense, number 75. Five-yard penalty, replay second down. That's Jaquay Parker's second penalty today. It's the fifth against the Eagles. Can't have those. A A Andy Reid's going to be—he's going to be furious at halftime. This team is too good. The Giants are too efficient offensively to be giving them yardage with your defensive penalties. If you have a tip or something as a defensive lineman where you're going to go on movement, or you're going to go on the center's head, you need to go and back up like a quarter of a yard or a half a yard. This way, if you do go a little bit early, you still have that little bit of area or room, a cushion 
that you won't be off sides when you go early. Jacobs on second and three, wrapped up in the backfield by Chris Gokong. That's a nice play by Chris Gokong, because he is not free by any means when he gets to Brandon Jacobs. He's trying to work his way through there to get to him right here on the outside. They got the safeties walking up. They try and reset the play. Quentin Michael bails out. He gets underneath Madison Hedgecock, the fullback, and is able to get Brandon Jacobs down. Ninth play of the drive for the Giants. Third down and six. Three receivers. Smith in the slot. Giants must get to the 23. Manning, hump fakes. Now he throws. And Amani Toomer was out of bounds when he made the catch. What a great job by Eli Manning at the line of scrimmage because Philadelphia, it, it, we talked about sorting it out. Who's coming? Who's not coming? Don't get baited. But they've got everybody coming inside. He checks to a play that gets him out on the perimeter. But good coverage by the Eagles in the secondary. Amani Toomer gets open a little bit late. You know, we talk about vision with Eli Manning and looking downfield, Moose, but on that particular play, the blitz was coming from his right. On the left-hand side, there was a huge hole where nobody was coming. That's exactly where he slid. So he's not only has vision of the secondary, but the line of scrimmage of where he can go and gain a little time to get that ball downfield. And Carney's kick is blocked. A 47-yard attempt. Carney had hit 14 in a row. And Trent Cole... Got a piece of it. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new Hyundai Genesis. It all starts with this. By Sprint. Join the Now Network. By Pizza Hut. Introducing Panormus, Pizza Hut's biggest fan pizza ever. And by the U.S. Army. There's Strong and then there's Army Strong. To find out more, talk to your local recruiter. Eagles maintaining their 3 0 lead over the Giants following the block field goal by Trent Cole. Very athletic move by Trent Cole to get that block. We'll show it to you in a second. Eagles start from their own 37 yard line. Inside handoff, Westbrook gaining three out to the 40. Well, let, let's first give some, uh, some kudos to Rory Seagrass's special teams coach. Here's Trent Cole inside. Now, you can't use another player to gain an advantage to launch yourself. But look at that athletic ability to go up and over and get the block. Now that is something that they have seen on their special teams tape that both the guards for the New York Giants are not going to rise up after the snap. They keep their heads down. You get a big athletic guy inside like Trent Cole hops over and is able to get the block. Second and seven. Danny Clark brings down Brian Westbrook. Loss of three. guys in the middle there they are doing a great job of penetration and being in that Philadelphia Eagles backfield all day today and that's the difference in the run game when those inside guys can go and dominate and then there's there's nothing like it Eagles goose negative yardage minus four yards on the ground today third down and ten Eagles must get to the 47 McNabb to Westbrook and he's tackled up a 42 by Antonio Pierce. Well, during the week, they said they needed 22 eyes on Brian Westbrook. They had six of them right there. You're going to get him out on a little swing pass, see if he can make a catch and run after he helps out a little bit. But there's three Giants coming, and they do a great job. They've got him surrounded. One coming in from the left, one coming in from the right. You squeeze him in. Don't give him any options to get outside. Dominic Hicks it back deep for the Giants. Sam Rocka punting from his own 31. Taken at the 18 by Hickson. Nowhere to go, and Hickson loses a couple on the return. A 40-yard punt by Rocka. Giants' first four possessions, they were unable to convert on a fourth and four. 
two three and outs and a block field goal very uncharacteristic right now for the New York Giants they are a team of methodical execution and we have not seen that up until this point this afternoon first and ten from their own 16 yard line as Manning fires Stuart Bradley on the coverage Kevin Boss the intended receiver we go back to just a couple of plays throughout this game the reverse on the opening series that lost 12 and kind of got them out of sync and they really haven't been able to get back into sync. Manning just two for his last eight. Second and ten from the 16. This is Jacobs. Brandon Jacobs out across the 20. Gain of five. Chris Gokon made the tackle. A couple of plays that we've seen this afternoon that are very uncharacteristic for the Giants. The opening series, they're rolling right along. And then they run the reverse. Victor Abiyamiri snuffs that one out. And then Dominic kicks in on a great throw by Eli Manning has to go right through the breadbasket and then Trent Cole just an athletic play on something the Eagles saw on film able to block that last field goal attempt so th th these are things that we have not seen from this giant team except in that Cleveland game. They're only lost they've won seven consecutive games since. On third and six no receiver in the vicinity. You're right, Moose. They are definitely out of sync right here, looking around, wondering what's going on. The sideline, you know, is, is just wondering what's happening. You see right here, I mean, he goes on a, a close, you know, a crossing route. Instead of going and, and going downfield, Dominic Hickson. I mean, they're on two different pages right now. You can see the expression on Eli's face. You have to see where that contact was made by Akeem Jordan inside five yards. That's all right. That was a slant. It could have been inside that, that five-yard area. Fagels punting from his own 10. Wow, wow, what a kick. Bob. Jackson fields it at the 20. Jackson up the sidelines, a penalty marker. 61 yard punt by Fagels. 22 on the return. Turn. Illegal block in the back. Number 39 of the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, Philadelphia. Timeout. That's Quentin Demps. The sixth Eagles penalty today. Eagles leading the Giants 3 0. McNabb 5 of 7. Westbrook only 4 yards on 6 carries. Worst starting field position of the day for the Eagles from their own 23 yard line. Westbrook out to the 26, gain of three. We've talked about the Giants being out of sync. We've seen replays of a couple of the plays the blocked field goal, the drop pass by Hickson. Do you feel the events of the last week involving Burris and Pierce, the distractions, does that have any effect on what takes place on the field? No, no, this team has done a tremendous job of maintaining their focus. And at the top, I said, I don't think we can call them distractions anymore because their focus is so good. You call them challenges. Now, they're just not making some plays today, which they normally have done. Dominic Hickson has an opportunity to make a play. He doesn't do it. Now, let's not take away from anything this Philadelphia Eagles defense is doing. They challenged everybody last week to a man to play better than they did a month ago when these teams squared off. And they have done that up until this point. Now, the, stuff, the, the weather today obviously favors the way the Giants play offensive football against the Eagles. When you have an offense that relies on the big play and explosive plays downfield, conditions at this time of the year will challenge you. And I think the Eagles are facing a little bit of that so far in this first half. Third down and seven. Eagles must get to the 33, and they do. As McNabb's pass is caught for a first down, a gain of 10 by Kevin Curtis. 
You know what, Moose? I, I, I disagree with you just a little bit. I think, you know, when we came here on Friday and met with the New York Giants, the media that was outside, there was 50 trucks, there's cameras here all during the pregame and, and warm-ups and just talking to the PR department of the Giants and all they had to deal with, at some point it has to affect you a little bit. You know, I, I, they've done a great job, the Giants, with dealing with everything, all the off-field issues. But they have to go and realize that, you know, it's like going to the playoffs or the Super Bowl. You're not used to all the media and all the people being around and everybody asking you questions, whether it's at home or wherever it might be. So I think that might be coming into a little bit of play here and uh, the Eagles trying to capitalize on it, which they aren't right now yet. And it did not really affect the Giants last week in Washington because they hit the road in the late morning Saturday, only about nine, ten hours after everything happened. And the media did not have a chance to really question the players prior to the game against the Redskins. They kind of stayed away from the distractions last weekend. Here's Westbrook, and Westbrook picks up a first down out to the 47-yard line. James Butler made the tackle, a gain of nine for Westbrook, and Justin Tuck is slow to get back up onto his feet. We've had a couple of ends around and some misdirections coming. Now, one of the things that happens is all of a sudden you have to play that one kind of clean. So you're going to get up here. You're going to be waiting for that. That's going to allow Brian Westbrook to get back down inside. You're not allowed to squeeze down the line of scrimmage. So that's why a lot of times you'll see that what they call a ghost. It's kind of the fake end around, fake reverse coming over the top. And then that allows the running back to get backside a little bit easier. McNabb, chase from behind. Got rid of it. Lorenzo Booker makes the catch out of the 48-yard line as McNabb was taken down by Kiwanuka as we had West Kurt Menefee. Kurt. And we send it south to New Orleans. Falcons and Saints. Michael Turner is NFL leading 14th rushing touchdown of the season. Atlanta still behind, but it's a 13-7 ball game in the second quarter. Back to Kenny Moose and Goose. How about the NFC South? Like the NFC East, no team under 500. Second down and nine. McNabb throws, and Curtis unable to come down with it. Kevin Dockery on the coverage. Yeah, Kevin Dockery lucky right there because that ball is going to be underthrown. It's deflected. The, uh, the throw of Donovan McNabb is impacted. He doesn't have his eyes turned around. Kevin Curtis is coming back to make that play. I don't Just, know. That looked like he was all up in his face as that ball came through. Look at him right there, Moose. Got that hand back in time. Yeah, you know, he was up in his face. That's one thing. Face mask, he was right around it. I, I don't know. I think the Giants got away with one there. Third down and nine. Matt can't find anyone. Now throws to the outside. L.J. Smith, terrific second effort. And the New Jersey native, Rutgers product, picks up an Eagles first down as Smith gains nine. Donovan McNabb finds L.J. Smith late. Here's something we haven't seen in a while. Kenny Phillips has just played outstanding the last couple of weeks. Misses a tackle on the outside in space. We've got an Eagle player down on the sideline after that run. Kevin Curtis getting up slow. Wind continues to swirl here at Giant Stadium. First time these teams met a month ago, 67 combined points, 36-31. So far today with 238 remaining in the first half, 3-0. Divisional games usually go that way. Very rarely do you get two of the similar type of games in the course of a season. First and ten from the Giants, 42. McNabb a pump fake to 360. Gets rid of it to L.J. Smith. And Smith picks up another first down to the Giants, 30. A gain of 12. Well, L.J. Smith has just made some plays on the last two uh, opportunities. The, the, the one on the last one is a great individual effort. This one, Donovan McNabb, great job with the pump fake. Get the defender up in the air. Get the ball underneath him. 
but the Giants actually defended that play pretty well. That's just a great effort by L.J. Smith to get him some positive yards. Four receptions, 35 yards for Smith as we hit the two-minute warning with the Eagles on the move, leading the Giants 3-0. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Be there live as the BCS matchups are announced. The All-State BCS Selection Show. Tonight after the OT, only on Fox. 3-0 Eagles, two minutes to go. Second quarter, Aaron Ross of the Giants has gone in for x-rays on his ankle. Kevin Curtis of the Eagles has gone to the locker room as well. Tenth play of the drive for Philadelphia. The handoff to Westbrook. Westbrook breaks three. Westbrook inside the 10, the five, touchdown. One of the toughest things for a defense to do when you play against the Eagles is find Brian Westbrook. You heard the comment, we got to have 22 eyes on this guy. He gets in behind the offensive lineman and you lose him. And then all of a sudden, he's gone. They've got everybody up on the line of scrimmage, so once he pops, he is gone. The one thing he does, Moose, is he keeps his legs moving. Even when he's behind those offensive line, he's looking left, looking right, but his legs are always moving, so he never has to go and regain the center of gravity and keep his momentum going. He always has it with him. Career high, ninth rushing touchdown of the season for Westbrook. As Goose pointed out earlier, he scored four touchdowns in the Eagles' last game against Arizona. 10-0 Eagles. The danger of crowding everybody up on the line of scrimmage when you've got a guy like Brian Westbrook. Nine on the line. It's only Corey Webster, number 23, off the ball. Now, he even cheats up a little bit. Oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? I lost him. Oh, here he comes. Now you're in trouble. You've got nobody in a position to be able to make a play on him. Yep, all you have is one line of defense. Once you get past that, like you pointed out, Moose, there's no one back there to make the play or stop a touchdown run like we're seeing right here. One of the things that the Eagle offensive linemen don't get enough credit for is very rarely do you see them on the ground. You saw the block by Nick Cole late coming over the top, and if Antonio Pierce was going to be able to get himself back into the play, Nick Cole was going to light him up anyway. So I, the one thing that I like about the Eagles offensive line, they're always on their feet. They're, they're very rarely on the ground. Because once you're on the ground, it's over. You can't be any help to your team. 13th touchdown of the season. Westbrook tying his career high. Nine rushing touchdowns and four touchdown receptions. You saw the ball blow off the tee as Akers approached. Be like Tiger Woods trying to hold that, that three wood back after the, the little bug is on his ball. David Akers able to shut that kick down. Greg Lewis will hold for Akers this time. Taken out of bounds by Sonoris Moss. Good return by Moss out to the 36. 22 yards on the return. A couple. Two plays before the touchdown, L.J. Smith on his run. If you watch in the background, Donovan McNabb, freeze that right there. He's, I don't know if he's holding his, his ribs or his shoulder, but we're, we're keeping an eye on that down here on the field. Just something that I spotted as the play moved down here right in front of him. Good catch, Goose. I don't know, Moose. It, it looked like it was it, something was bothering him, but could it be, uh, you know, absolutely nothing? Derek Ward into Eagles territory. 15 yards to the Philadelphia 49. Well, there's a nice little changeup again. We've talked about the Giants on the perimeter. This time they're up inside. They pulled Chris Snee around tight. Don't pull him outside, pull him in tight. Derek Ward downhill right away. Giants have all three of their timeouts as Manning's pass intended for Hickson, and Manning took a hit after he released the football. Darren Howard, number 90, keeps working, keeps working, gets there a step late. 
But gets a hit on Eli Manning. Those things add up over the course of the game. That Eagles front line only rushing four guys, too, again, pressure against five offensive linemen from the Giants. Three wide receivers set, second and ten. Boy, he's really getting them. He's really working his hard count. Trent Cole's pointing at David Deal. David Deal's pointing at Trent Cole. Offside. Defense number 58, unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty, second down. Seventh Eagles penalty. Giants have gained 50 yards thanks to penalties. We've seen a lot of great things from Eli Manning, Bruce, but I think the next level is just what we saw there. Hard counts, getting free plays downfield, using your ability to go and draw defenses offsides. Derek Ward to the 42. Timeout called by the Giants, a minute 13 on the clock. Giants have not been shut out in a first half in just over four years December 5th 2004 in a game against the Washington Redskins and remember the Giants lead the NFL they average over 29 points per game this season as Eli chats with offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride coming up the visa halftime report with Kurt Terry Howie Michael and Jimmy they'll be along with scores and highlights and the Fox Sports ticker will have all the latest stats that's coming up on the visa Halftime report. Third down at three. Manning over the top. Incomplete. Amani Toomer, the intended receiver. Now those Giants look right now like what is going on they they're having a lot of problems with with timing down here on the field something we haven't seen in a long time but the players are just looking all over the place the offensive line don't know what's going on the, the secondary Tom Coughlin on the sideline I've never haven't seen the Giants like this in a long time and goose the Giants going for it on fourth and three knowing that the Eagles are out of timeouts. Manning on fourth down, dropped by Steve Smith. Took a hard hit from Asante Samuel and could not hold on to the football. But again, I, I don't know if Eli Manning can make a better throw than this. It just opportunities to make plays, and we've seen the, the giant receivers do it all year long. They're just not doing it here in the first half. So for the second time this half, the Giants go for it on fourth down and do not convert. So with a minute, two seconds remaining in the half, the Eagles take over from their own 42-yard line. They are out of timeouts. Wide receiver set, Jason Avant shifting. Inside hand off to Westbrook, and he is into Giants territory. Ryan Westbrook picks up a first down, gain of 11. And now a penalty flag as the Eagles try and get to the line. Well, they've got no timeouts. They were trying to get set quick, and we had a couple guys caught in a little skirmish down there. See what Antonio Pierce might have been holding somebody so they couldn't get into their alignment. Delay of game. Defense, number 58. Preventing the ball to be reset for the next down. Five yard penalty. First down. You see, he's got a hold of Brian Westbrook on the tackle, but he's not allowing him to get back up. And then all of a sudden, everybody started pushing and shoving. The referees couldn't get the ball set to start the next play. That's good thinking. You just got to sell out a little better. You can't wrap up and keep, you know, rolling around. I mean, if you're going to go and lay on the guy, you just lay on him and act like you're a little lazy or something. That's how you get away with that. You know, from experience, Goose, I assume. No, I, I read that in a book one time, Jenny. So the Eagles not only gain 11 yards on the play, five yards on the penalty, 
and the clock stops so they have the opportunity to huddle up. There's Antonio Pierce on the tackle and <laughs> right had one leg now I got two legs. Yeah right then and there you just got to lay just lay there. McDowell rolling right and his pass is short intended for Deshaun Jackson. Deuce, I know you're not a big fan of the big twist inside, but Justin Tuck is one of the few players that seems to be able to get there every time they run it. He can come from that defensive end spot, loop all the way back inside, and get pressure on the quarterback. You know, Steve Spagnuolo does a great job of setting it up, but uh, you know, I used to hate those three-man games. It took so much time, and you know, yeah, it confuses the offensive line, but Justin Tuck has such good lateral speed that he can go and then cut, boom, get up the field and make it count and, and get that penetration when he needs it. McNabb to Westbrook to the 34, gain of eight, and Eagles first down. Remember, they have no timeouts remaining. And McNabb will spike it, stop the clock with 27 seconds. And remember, this is the direction that Andy Reid was trying to avoid at the end of the first quarter when he called that timeout to allow David Akers to attempt that 51 yard or so. Not, a, not as much confidence going in this direction, and, and boy, that ball was really moving. Pre-game, we watched, we watched the ball starting outside the left upright by a couple of yards that would go wide right by the time it got down there. Also keep in mind, the Eagles deferred when they won the coin toss, so they will get the ball first in the second half. Looking to add to their 10-0 lead. McNabb fires, incomplete, and there is a flag. Jason Avant was the intended receiver. Antonio Pierce on the coverage. Yeah, I thought he got there a little bit early on that one from my vantage point. That's interference. Defense, number 58. Spot foul, automatic first down. And if you want to know how that wind is... Well, just listen to the official's microphone when he speaks. Pierce's second penalty of this drive. A first down for the Eagles from the Giants, 26. 21 seconds remaining, second quarter. Westbrook. Westbrook down to the 21. Oh, boy, that's a toughie right there. You got to get everybody lined up quick. See how much time they've got if they get another chance to... Get a little bit more yardage in. With 11 and seconds remaining. It, it's all about the play with the win right now. I mean, this, this is, we saw David Akers kick a 51 yarder, so this is within his range. The thing they're trying to do is shorten the distance as much as they can to take away all that play that the wind is going to have on this ball moving from left to right. They've got the time, they just have to execute. One shot to the end zone here. A quick to the outside. Keep in mind, no timeouts. And there it is, quick to the outside to Greg Lewis, who gained seven. So I never David understand Andrews this. In will the, come out here, Darrell. In this situation, why defenses allow offenses to execute this? Get up on Greg Lewis. I mean, you know this is one of only two options they have at this point. They're either going to go to the end zone, like Tony said, or they're just going to try and pick up a few more yards. I don't understand why they play so far off in those situations and just give them those five yards on the outside. First reception for Lewis in five games. A 32-yard attempt, and Akers' kick gets blocked. And it's picked up across midfield, Kevin Dockery. And Dockery is going to take it all the way. What a turn of events for the Giants. That's the second time this year this has happened to this Eagles team. The other time was against San Francisco right before the half. Almost like Groundhog's Day for them. had to hit this ball low 
to try and drive it through the wind. I think they got enough yardage where he just needed to get it up, but th that ball never seemed to get above anybody as it got towards the line of scrimmage. Me and you, Moose, talk about momentum and how big it is. I'll tell you what, there was no momentum for the Giants. They were in disarray. They didn't know what direction they were going in. They didn't have any feel. Right now, everything is going in the Giants' direction. Justin this is Tuck. huge. Yeah, Justin Tuck just comes right up through the middle. Sneaks inside, gets that big arm up. Attention to detail again, though. You've got a, you've got a block guy, and you've got a guy coming off the edge that is there to scoop and score if you block the field goal. Second career touchdown for Kevin Dockery. He returned it 71 yards. So instead of a successful field goal, a 13-0 lead for the Eagles, and they get the football to start the second half. John Carney with the point after. The Giants cut the Eagles' lead to 10-7. A huge turn of events here at the Meadowlands. The Visa Halftime Report is coming up. The Visa Halftime Report, sponsored by Visa. No matter how you prepare for game day, Visa is the way to go. And welcome to the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Menefee along with Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. The late score in your game makes it exciting. Eagles, that's, Anto that's Antonio Pierce. Linebacker for the Giants watches John Carney, 47-yard field goal. It is blocked by Trent Cole of the Eagles. Three to nothing at this point. Eagles off tackle, out of the V as in Villanova. There he is, our guy, Brian Westbrook. 30-yard touchdown run. Eagles over the Giants, 10 to nothing. Then, this attempt, this, this, extra, this field goal was blocked by Justin Tuck, scooped up by Dockery. Dockery takes it to the house. 71-yard field goal return. Touchdown, Giants. 10 to 7, Eagles on top of the New York Giants at the half. Atlanta at New Orleans. Reggie Bush ready to get it going against the Falcons. Saints and Falcons. Breeze. Quick slant from the outside to Bush. Lined up wide set. Five-yard strike. 7 to nothing Saints. Then Michael Turner out of the eye. Wants to go left. Goes back against the grain. Five-yard touchdown run. It's the Saints up by 10, 3 to, 10 to 7. Then the fade route to Finneran. Nice job adjusting on the football. Excellent pass. 16 to 14, though. Saints by two over Atlanta. Minnesota at Detroit. Now, reason we're showing you this, Jared Allen, the great defensive end for the Vikings, is injured when Goster Cherilis cuts him down. There he is, 79, center of your screen, the cut right there. Aaron, the, now all of a sudden Allen gets up, he's going after Cherilis. That's what I would have done, that's what Michael would have done, that's what Howie would have done, that's what even Kirk would have done. And then Moran Norris, he gets ejected for throwing a punch at Napoleon Harris. Why, I don't know. Quarterback Gus Farad is carted off, injured back, 6-3 Detroit over the Vikings. Big six he would have gotten. I'm a lover, not a fighter, but oh, 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 oh. Curtin never would have played football, obviously. <laughs> Jacksonville at Chicago. David Gorard picked off by Daniel Manning. Deep into, it is deep into Jacksonville's territory. And then Kyle Orton back. Fires his football to Desmond Clark. One yard, touchdown strike, 20-3 Bears all over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Houston at Green Bay, Matt Schaub, having been out of the starting lineup for Houston for the last four games, gets the start. Hooks up with Kevin Walker, good job. You underthrow the ball, the receiver sees it first, he makes the adjustment, then the defense reacts. Nice job, 58-yard touchdown pass. Houston by seven. And then Aaron Rodgers answers this 20-yarder. Nice little job of pushing off by Donnelly. Don, that's a compliment. Got away with it, 10 to seven. It is the Texans over the Packers by three. Cleveland and Tennessee play action. Get the linebacker in the hole. Just a second, allowing Ahmad Hall to get into the flat. Now, all of a sudden, it's just a sprint. 28-yard touchdown, 14-6 Tennessee over Cleveland. Cincinnati at Indianapolis. There it is, single back set, sprint draws. All it is, Dominic Rhodes. Good job of making people miss. 17-yard touchdown run. It's the Colts, 14-3. 
over the Cincinnati Bengals. All right, Howie, let's begin with you and the Giants needing a win to clinch the division and the first round by not getting anything against the Eagles today. Well, with the exception of the first Giants game, the Eagles defense has been great all year versus the run and 219 yards in their first outing. And what they've done today is they've stopped the run on first down and on second down, forced them into less manageable first and second. One for seven on third downs for the Giants. Very uncharacteristic. The Hicks and drop on a short touchdown on a great throw by Eli was a big play. Over in the Atlanta New Orleans game, you know, Atlanta's had their success by not having mistakes. Drop balls, penalties, the interception. You can't do that against the Saints playing at home. 278 total yards for the Saints in the first half. And the Giants have to tackle. They look, defense look very ordinary right now. No, no well, tackling. Well, they're whatsoever. missing a great player. And when you're missing a great <laughs> yeah. player. Who, Tiki Barber? You know. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of all you great Second players out there, don't game. let the Comes man get you Comes your way after down. this. <laughs> Win a fan's dream ticket in the 2008 Visa Inside Pass NFL Sweepstakes. Between now and December 31st, using your Visa enters you for a chance to win trips to Super Bowl 43, the 2009 NFL Pro Bowl, and a 2009 NFL Playoff game. Visa. No matter how you prepare for game day, Visa is the way to go. On a cold and windy afternoon here at the Meadowlands, Giants looking to clinch a first round by trail 10 0 until this blocked field goal by Justin Tuck. Picked up by Kevin Dockery, and Dockery returned it 71 yards for a touchdown. On the final play of the first half, John Carney added the extra point. Tom Coughlin celebrates as the Giants cut the Eagles' lead to 10-7. Giants looking to win their eighth consecutive game. The second half coming up. Visa. No matter how you prepare for game day, Visa is the way to go. We get set for the second half here at the Meadowlands with the Eagles leading the Giants by the score of 10-7. Kenny Albert, Darrell Johnston, how huge was that blocked field goal at the end of the half? Unbelievable because the Giants had not played well all afternoon in that first half, doing things that are completely uncharacteristic for them. Opportunities for plays in the passing game, a big play to Dominic Hickson, a conversion by Steve Smith, just doing things we haven't seen them do except once against the Cleveland Browns this year. And Justin Tuck blocks the field goal. Kevin Dockery scoops and scores. And now, now they've got to do something here in the third quarter offensively because Philadelphia will have the win at their back going into that last quarter. Tony, you spoke with Tom Coughlin moments ago, and he was concerned about the win in the fourth quarter as well. Yes, he was. He says, if we're going to do something, we need to do it now in the third quarter. He spoke to the whole team. He said, that wasn't us in the first half. I don't know who that was, but that was not us. In the second half, we need to come out, especially in the third quarter. We need to go and we're going to have the wind with us. We need to go and make catches, not have penalties, and not hurt ourselves. We got the momentum now, but we got to go keep going, and we got to put some points on the board. That was his message to the team at halftime. Hey, Goose, you expect them to, uh, to really focus on that run in that third quarter? I, I really do. Run and pass, I expect them to mix it up, but go to the air. I think the wind is a, you know, the long pass is Moose is really. Played a factor in the ball move, and we saw some big drop balls. I think they're going to go to a lot more short game in this third quarter. Quentin Demps on the return for the Eagles, and he's tackled by Chase Blackburn after a 19-yard return. Fantasy numbers from the first half. Donovan McNabb, 11 of 18, 104 yards. Brian Westbrook with a 30-yard touchdown run. A couple of catches for... Kevin Curtis, who suffered a head, head injury and went to the locker room. Kenny, I got an update on Kevin Curtis, too. He has a concussion and will not return in this game today. All right, thanks, Goose. So Curtis will not return. Greg Lewis split to the left. Hank Basket in the slot. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Westbrook gains a couple out to the 32. We talked about the Giants having to come out and play well here in this third quarter with the wind at their back. But I really think that Andy Reid and his guys, after the way that first half ended, now they didn't, you know, Tony mentioned, they didn't take advantage of a lot of the opportunities that the Giants 
you know, gave them, but they're having an opportunity to go in at 13 to nothing. And boy, that is that is a huge chain of events to happen like that. I'm interested to see this opening drive by this Eagles offense. Three wide receivers, second down and eight. The slant broke it up. Kevin Dockery, who scored the Giants' touchdown, following the blocked field goal, Brian Westbrook, the intended receiver. You, you split Brian Westbrook on the outside, you're going to get a corner. You're going to draw a corner. That's a heck of a play by Kevin Dockery. And get Dockery in the game because Aaron Ross suffered an ankle injury in the first half. Four wide receivers, third down and eight. Eagles must get to the 40. And they do, as the Nats pass is caught at the 42-yard line by Jason Avant. So the Eagles able to move the chains. Big conversion right there. Get yourself another set of downs. I got nervous there. It looked like Jason Avant was coming backwards. Antonio Pierce gives him a little bit more time. I think he might have ran beyond the first down marker the other way. Just get down. Oh boy, does he get bent back awkward there. Chase Blackburn actually on the tackle. Eagles down to four wide receivers. Reggie Brown inactive today. And as Deuce reported, Kevin Curtis will not return due to a concussion. Here's Westbrook up the middle. Westbrook pushing the pile out to the 45-yard line. Gain of four. And that's what they have to do. They've got to continue to get at least three yards when they run the football. And Steve Spagnuolo is going to do everything he can. He knows the way this offense functions from his time in Philadelphia, trying to stop it. But the one thing that John Runyon said is, you know, everybody wants to talk about us getting away from the running game. We can control that ourselves by being efficient. He goes, if we have a bunch of two-yard runs or ones and zeros, and, you know, God forbid we get some negative runs, Andy's going to move away from the running game. 70 yards on the ground for Westbrook, including 30 on the touchdown run. Second and six. Gap incomplete. You know, Moose, that's exactly the one big thing that I've seen, the difference between the first quarter and the end of the second and right now. The difference in that offensive line with the way they're coming off the ball, the way they're playing the pass, they're not getting any pressure the Giants when they rush four. The Eagles offensive line is playing very well together. They know the game plan and what they're going to see from the Giants now. And they saw it in the first half and how they adjusted, they adjusted it very well from not only the pass but the run. Third down and six. Eagles must get to the Giants, 49. McNabb takes off. He picks up a first down. Donovan McNabb to the Giants, 44, gain of 11. Hey, Goose, there's a great example of it right here, bringing that pressure. Your pressure's going to come from here, and he's going to pull out. We talked about recognizing where it was coming from, sorting through the pre-snap. Okay, we've got a lot of guys up here, but who's coming, who's not? You have to know those looks. The opening series, the first couple of series by this Eagles offense, they were turning guys loose. Donovan McNabb, not real confident, not real comfortable back there in the pocket. That one was just a decision by Donovan. I'm pulling it down, I'm going to get the first down myself. McNabb's pass is short, intended for Greg Lewis. That third down run by McNabb, for the first down, Eagles have now converted their last five third down attempts today. That's big stuff. It's another set of downs. It becomes cliche. Everybody talks about, you know, who won the third down battle, and you have to take a look at the game. But now, right now, for the Philadelphia Eagles, it, it's very important because of the way that first half ended. They've got to have a positive drive here to start this second half. Now on second attempt, complete to Hank Basket. Basket stopped just shy of the marker. So Basket games nine. Donovan having all day there in the backfield. The offensive line picking up those guys in the line of scrimmage. You see it right there. He has enough time to get it to Hank Basket. Only thing Hank needs to do is go and cover that ball up. Once you get that right there, know where you're at, cover that ball up. Webster does a great job of punching the ball out. Unfortunately for the Giants, it went out of bounds. Unfortunately for the Giants, he was stopped a yard shy. So now a third and one. 
the Eagles problems on third and one have been well chronicled this season. McNabb on the sneak. The Eagles last in the league this season. They had been seven for 14 on third and one run plays. And McNabb does pick up the first down. You go back to that game November 9th, a key third and one, fourth and one, and the Eagles were stuffed by the Giants on both. And you look at when they try to do it with the running game, they, they've been last in the uh, in the NFL, and that's after actually making a few the last couple of games. Westbrook, two yards down to the 32. This is the one thing that, that Tom Coughlin is probably worried about. You, you talked about how important it was for his offense to perform well here in this quarter with the wind favoring them. And now the Eagles come out, they take the ball going into this win and have just controlled the clock. And that clock right there just keeps ticking down. Those, and that's not what Tom Coughlin wants to see. Because he knows in that fourth quarter he's got that wind in his face and the advantage isn't to him. Second down and eight, off the fake to Westbrook. McNabb hits Westbrook out of the backfield, and Westbrook is a flag. Westbrook picks up another Eagles first down. Nine-yard pickup to the Giants, 23. Prior to the pass, contact, defense number 55. The penalty is declined. He's out of the play as a first down. Danny Clark. We've talked about how important Brian Westbrook is to this Philadelphia Eagles offense. Last season, he led the league in yards from scrimmage. Last year, 140 yards per game. This year, 51 fewer yards per game. Now he's missed a couple of games. He, he hasn't been healthy since week three. He's been fighting through some things, but uh, you know, a lot of people will look at the quarterback and say how important he is for an offense to function well with the Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, it's Brian Westbrook, Every, everybody we talked to. Westbrook was ruled down. Gain of three, so Westbrook, including that play, now has 103 yards in today's game. 75 on the ground. 28 in the air. And you mentioned Steve Spagnuolo's quote prior to the last meeting. We must have 22 eyes on 36. Referring to Westbrook's uniform number. Westbrook with the only offensive touchdown in today's game. Eagles really taking time. We see the play clock right there. And no problem running that down as you see on the top the game clock knowing that the Giants are they're gonna have the advantage in the fourth quarter. They've taken over six minutes off the clock goose. LJ Smith. Smith down to the 16 yard line. His fifth catch today. A gain of four. He's having a nice afternoon and, and really in that first half made a couple of plays on his own. Just one play just dumped off into the flat to him, makes Kenny Phillips miss and gets a first down. So L.J. Smith really, uh, really showing up this afternoon for the Eagles in this passing game. He has tied his career high, or his season high, that is, with five receptions today. Remember, the Eagles have converted their last five third down attempts. McNabb with time. He throws. No flags. L.J. Smith, the intended receiver. Kenny Phillips on the coverage. Donovan McNabb, plenty of time on this throw. There's L.J. Smith. He's looking for him. He's been there for him all afternoon. Well, he might have got there at Tick Soon coming through the back. Yeah, that's another one. We saw one earlier. Hands to the face and hitting a little bit early. But like you said, Moose, earlier, that's the way the officials are going to call it. And they've called it both ways. So uh, now you know what you can get away with if you're on a defense, and you know you're going to get a little bit of bumping if you're a receiver there and looking for the ball. 34-yard attempt, high snap, and the Giants got a piece of another one. Thomas with the 
o'clock. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. By Visa. No matter how you prepare for game day, Visa is the way to go. By Nikon. Do you have the touch? The new Nikon Coolpix S60 with touchscreen. And by the all-new 09 F-150. It's not just a new truck, it's a new F-150. Yes, folks, it's windy. In case... You have not been able to figure that out. Giants on offense for the first time in this third quarter from their own 24-yard line. Brandon Jacobs. Jacobs out to the 28. Eagles held on to the football for seven minutes, come away with nothing. This one's coming from the outside now. We saw Justin Tuck in the middle block one. Now this one is coming off the edge with Terrell Thomas. Great effort not to give up on it. Look at him spin the body, get that arm up, gets a hand on it. Brent Selleck, get a shove right there. Get a shove. You shorten the corner. You didn't give a lot of effort. You never know when your position is going to be the most important one. We've had two guys kind of have a little bit of a lull on a P.A.T. field goal, and it's cost the Eagles six points. Actually, more than that with a block for the touch. Jacobs out to the 34-yard line. The Eagles are actually minus seven. That's not a good sign right there. Brandon Jacobs looked like his uh, ankle twisted an ankle or something with his leg. Missed the game two weeks ago due to a left knee injury. Did not play in Arizona. One more look at the last play. Brandon Jacobs out. Derek Ward in. Third and inches for the Giants. Ward, first down. And you talked about it earlier, Darrell, about the Ward coming in and Jacobs coming out. I think, uh, you know, Derek Ward is probably more dangerous in this type of a game. The Eagles have done a really good job of stopping any running back that comes through the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. And I think Derek Ward is, has a little bit more of a lateral move and can cut back a little better. Uh, than Brandon Jacobs in this particular situation. Ward's had a terrific season, over 1,000 yards of total offense. Over 600 yards on the ground for the second straight season. Ward tries to bounce it to the outside. Gain of one for Derek Ward. Six minutes remaining, third quarter. Eagles by three. And one of the great things that Eli does is at the line of scrimmage. Now this offense, it'll come up to the line of scrimmage. It could be a run pass check. He could see something from the Eagles defense that they've worked on during the course of the week that they want to get to automatically. So one of the things that Eli hasn't got enough credit for this season is getting him into the right place at the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine, inside handoff to Ward. And Ward is upended at the 45, gain of six, as we check in once again with Kurt. You know, kind of lost in the uh, dismal season the Lions have been having is the great play of the wide receiver, Calvin Johnson, taking the pass from Dante Culpepper. He goes 70 yards on this one, more than 1,000 yards on the season, his 10th touchdown, second in the league. More importantly, gives the Lions a three-point lead in the third quarter, searching for that first win over Minnesota. Kenny? All right, thanks, Kurt. Third down and three. Giants must get to the 48. Low snap. Manning firing downfield for Hickson out of bounds. It is so hard as a quarterback when you get a low snap like we just saw to be able to take your eyes off everything that's going on downfield, make your adjustments. You can see in the backfield right there, the safety's moving. When Eli has to look down and look up, all of a sudden that confusion comes out and you cannot find your receiver. So exactly what he did, he threw it out of bounds where uh, no one can catch it. You saw Brian Dawkins on the coverage. Dawkins ties a club record today. His 180th game as an Eagle, matching Harold Carmichael. Eagles punt, fair catch called for at the 14 by Deshaun Jackson, 41 yards. On the punt.
Eagles. Welcome back. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa. Philadelphia Eagles lead the New York Giants 10-7. Late third quarter. Giants scored their only touchdown on a 71-yard return of a blocked field goal by Kevin Dockery. Brian Westbrook takes it out to the 21. Gain of seven. Chase Blackburn brought him down. Well, the games are over. Now college football's best teams will find out who they will play in college football's best games. It's a live primetime special that you can only see on Fox, the All-State BCS Selection Show tonight following the OT at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, right here on Fox. At the BCS computer right there. Spitting out the matchup. Looks like something. Here's Westbrook bouncing it to the outside. And down at the 24, close to an Eagles first down. Yeah, he almost came out of that one again. You can see the frustration there as he slapped his hands together. He's almost out the back door on this one again. And, and watch the line. Watch him on their feet. Everybody is on their feet, pushing, pushing. You don't see anybody on the ground in that situation. And when you've got somebody as athletic and dynamic as Brian Westbrook, if you can stay on your feet and give him an opportunity, he can come out the backside when you think the play's over and hit you for a long one. His feet never stop moving. I don't know if you saw it in those two replays, but his feet are constantly going and going and going. I'll tell you, that's why he could break it at any time. One hundred thirteen total yards today for Westbrook. He has the Eagles only touchdown. Westbrook all by himself has more yards today, Darrell, than the Giants. Giants only 117. Westbrook out to the 27-yard line. Clock continues to run. We approach three minutes remaining in the third quarter. And Tony talked about his conversation at halftime with Tom Coughlin wanting to put up some points in this third quarter before they have to go against the wind in the fourth and the Giants only have had one possession in this quarter. Philadelphia has done a great job just controlling the clock in this third quarter. They may end up the Giants may end up with only one possession in this third quarter. One possession no points. Second and seven Westbrook. Westbrook out to the 33 yard line. Well, we talked to John running like you talked about him earlier, Moose, and he loves when Andy Reid just keeps calling those run plays. And at the offensive line right now, just watching him come off the line of scrimmage and really a surge of that defensive line just going backwards. The offensive line of the Eagles is really dominating the line of scrimmage right now. Every now and then you'll see Justin Tuck come through the line of scrimmage, but on a whole, that offensive line for the Eagles is really getting better and better as the game goes on. Third down and one. This is Kyle Eckel. Eckel carried the ball six times last week against Arizona in his second season out of Navy. Released by the New England Patriots back in September, and Eckel on his first carry today picks up a first down. Oh, it was it was enlightening to me to sit down and talk to Andy Reid and, and hear his explanation of how they want to function offensively. And, and he did some research. You know, he went back and he looked. And some of the big coaches prior to him, you know, a, a Bill Walsh and a Joe Gibbs and, and what they did. And he's always said that he felt that those guys came out and they threw the ball first. You know, make the defense, chase the quarterback, rush the passes, get them tired, and then come back and hit them with the run. Bill Parcells and what he did with the Giants, very similar to that. We're going to come out, we're going to throw, we're going to tire the defense. Now you get into a situation like this. In the second half, you start grinding them out. You take advantage of the fact that you've had that defense on the field running and chasing your passing game all afternoon. Eagles with the edge in time of possession. That was certainly not the story back on November 9th. Giants had the ball for close to 40 minutes. Eagles just over 20 minutes. But the Giants today have run only six plays this quarter. That's pass is caught at the 41 yard line by Hank Baskin. So the Eagles now facing a third down and four as time winds down 
in this third quarter and the Eagles leading by three. Must get to the 45. Penalty marker as the catch is made by Westbrook and Brian Westbrook. Tackled by Antonio Pierce, but not before he picks up an Eagles first down. a big huddle for those officials right now. They've been in there for a while. A lot to talk about, Kenny. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 35. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. So Kevin Dockery at the end of the second quarter returns a blocked field goal 71 yards for a touchdown. And now at the tail end of the third quarter, it's Dockery who has called for a face mask on Greg Lewis. Well, the big thing right now, we've taken away the five-yard face mask. It's either a personal foul or not, and what they look for is the head to turn, and you can see the head get turned of the wide receiver on that face mask. So the Giants run only six plays in the third quarter. We head to the fourth, 10-7 Eagles. No scoring in the third quarter. Eagles. Lead the Giants 10-7. Giants would clinch the NFC East at a first round by with a win today. They have been outgained over the first three quarters by Brian Westbrook. First and 10 from the Giants, 39. As Westbrook gains three down to the 36. You know, we're watching the Eagles here run the ball and get yardage, but the one thing we're not seeing is a number on the scoreboard changing. It is still only 10 to 7. And I don't think 10 points is going to be enough to go and beat the Giants, especially what we've seen over the past and their ability to go and, and run the ball and, and make big plays in the fourth quarter to go and close games out. But it's very easy. I mean, they're so methodical. There's so much confidence. Have they played well today? No, they haven't played up to their standard, but that doesn't mean that, that by any means that this game is in the bag for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, they've responded to every challenge. McNabb stumbling coming out of the gate. Well, the big thing is, is that little miscue right now backs them up a little bit here on third down to third and 11. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, Goose, th this is amazing to me against this Giants defense. Eight out of the last nine third downs. That's why the Giants had one possession in the third quarter, the all-important third quarter for Tom Coughlin. Third down and 11. Eagles must get to the 29. McDowell throws complete to Westbrook. Westbrook inside the 15, the 10, touchdown. His second of the game, 40 yards from Donovan McNabb to Brian Westbrook, and now a late flag, probably for the celebration. Let's give this one to Donovan McNabb right there. Just a great job of extending this play. This is very similar to the play they ran on the previous third down. They're going to get Brian Westbrook isolated on Antonio Pierce. He gets caught up in the wash. But the only way he's able to get to that spot is because Donovan McNabb extended that play. Run sportsmanlike conduct down to the touchdown. It is a touchdown. Keep an eye on Trey Thomas there, number 72. There's a great job of giving Donovan that extra second to go and find Brian Westbrook down the field. We talked about that offensive line, and just a little push from Trey Thomas went and gave him that extra time. And you heard the referee, Gene Steratore. They picked up the flag for unsportsmanlike conduct. David Akers, the extra point. Westbrook, two touchdowns today. And he has also become the Eagles' all-time leader in yards from scrimmage.
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. By Best Buy, you happier. By Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. And by FedEx, your ultimate NFL air and ground player. Two touchdowns today, 14 this season for Westbrook, who breaks Harold Carmichael's franchise record for career yards from scrimmage. Eagles lead the Giants 17 7. Yeah, tough spot for Antonio Pierce. He's got Brian Westbrook, you just saw, he's become the Eagles' all time leader in yards from scrimmage, and he has got a lot of field to cover Brian Westbrook one on one in. That, that play, I think, is designed. We've got to get to Donovan McNabb before that ball gets out. They were able to extend it a little bit. You heard Tony talk about just that little push by Trey Thomas and allows Donovan to step up and get the ball to Brian Westbrook. Quentin Michael holding for David Akers. Picks it off five yards deep with the win into the end zone. Westbrook celebrates. Eagles by 10. The Giants in their first three games without Plastico Burris this season averaged 35 points per game. Only seven today scored on special teams. Lamont Bradshaw in the backfield. Brandon Jacobs' return is questionable due to the knee injury he suffered earlier. Bradshaw gains five on first down. Let's go back and take a look at this touchdown again. Here's your two guys that are going to be in coverage, but the strange thing is somehow they end up on Jason Avant. Now that leaves Antonio Pierce one-on-one -on -one with Brian Westbrook, and look at how much field he has to cover. You got some crazy releases right there. They're sure enough protection, but there go your two safeties with Jason Avant, and look at all that field that Antonio Pierce has to cover. And there's that little shove that Goose talked about. Second and five, Bradshaw. Penalty marker, Bradshaw gains four out to the 29. Holding, defense number 98, five yard penalty added to the end of the run, automatic. Down. Mike Patterson, the eighth Eagles penalty today. At, at this offensive line of the Giants do a great job of getting up to that second level. You know, they have combination blocks on the defensive line, but then they get up to the linebackers, and that's where a lot of their big runs come from. I'm surprised you don't see more of those defensive holding calls trying to keep those giant offensive linemen from climbing to that second level. Manning only five completions today. Going deep, and it's broken up. Nearly picked off by Asante Samuel. Wound up in a collision with his teammate, Brian Dawkins. Now that was very Cleveland-esque right there. We have not seen that from Eli Manning this season. You've got the blitz showing, but he's got some time. And here it comes. We're just unloading it right down the middle of the field. Boy, did he dodge one there. Manning was throwing only eight interceptions this season. Three came in that one game, the loss in Cleveland. Bradshaw. Bradshaw to the 37. Broderick Bunkley, the tackle. We check in with Kurt Nanafee. Kurt? Dawkins and Saints have been going back and forth all day. This time it's the Saints going on top. Drew Brees and Pierre Thomas hooking up on the seven-yard score. Two-point conversion attempt, no good, until New Orleans holds on to a five-point lead in the fourth quarter. Back to Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Kurt. Third down and eight. Giants must get to the 44. Three wide receivers. Manning just five for 17 today. Manning throws, and the catch is made for a first down. Nice play by Dominic Hickson who climbs the ladder to make the catch and gain 17 yards. That's a tremendous play because they need something positive right now. This offense is a little bit out of sync. They have been all afternoon. Dominic Hickson on the deep in route, balls up high, goes and gets it. That's a good play by Quentin Michael, too. He gets there and puts a hit on. Dominic Hickson finishes the play.
Giants and Eagles territory from the 47. Ahmad Bradshaw. Brent Cole, the initial hit. Cole coming into this game, Darrell, leads the league in tackles for negative yardage. He's had two today. Well, he didn't have any in that first matchup, if, if memory serves me correct. And that was one of the areas that you wanted to focus on this afternoon. Kevin Boss in motion up against Trent Cole. Watch him split this. Gets right upfield, unaccounted for. A little bit of confusion between tackle and tight end. Loss of three on the play. Jacobs. Again, his return is questionable due to a knee injury. Bradshaw the lone back. Three receivers set. Second down and 13. Manning, short, intended for Toomer. Steve Smith on the outside, Amani Toomer in the slot. Steve Smith's drawing a little bit of double coverage, doing a double move. Well, you can see the effect that the wind is having on that pass, Goose. You can see why Tom Coughlin thought it was so important for them to have success in the third quarter. That wind really kind of ate that ball up on that throw. Yeah, it's making those balls float left and right. And uh, this is not the easiest situation for Eli back there. Third down at 13. Manning to Smith. And Steve Smith will be stopped about a yard shy by Stuart Bradley. Ball will be spotted at the 38. Giants on fourth down twice in the first half were not successful. This will be a fourth down and one. Their other ones were a little bit longer, though. This is normally the fourth down you see, but because of conditions and where the ball was on the field, he had a fourth and three, a fourth and four. Four wide receivers on fourth and one. Manning looking to throw. And he's hit from behind by Darren Howard. So for the third time today, the Giants go for it on fourth down and cannot convert. Brent Cole, Darren Howard in on the play. Eagles football, they lead by 10. All right, let's take a look where Eli had an opportunity to go with the ball. Steve Smith, Amani Toomer covered. He's got Dominic Hickson deep, but he doesn't have the time to get to him. So the Eagles take over at their own 38, and Brian Westbrook found a big hole across midfield. 13 yards, and Westbrook is over 100 on the ground for the third time this season. But I think he wanted Sonoris Moss. Akeem Jordan, that's a great job right there. there. That is the route that Eli Manning wanted. He was expecting it to be there sooner. The reason it wasn't, Akeem Jordan gives Sonoris Moss a little shot as he's coming across. I don't see that enough today in the NFL. You're allowed to bump the guy inside five yards. We've got all these crossing routes. Just a smart, heady play. Totally disrupts the timing and takes away Eli Manning's prime receiver in that route. Eagles lead by 10 from the Giants. 49, it's Westbrook. There's that surge you've been talking about by that offensive line, Moose. That's been happening this whole second half. You know, we talked about John Runyon and, and how he wants the coach to keep calling run plays, and they're looking to get at least three yards, maybe four, to go and keep his confidence up. And uh, I'll tell you what, the surge that we're seeing there on the line of scrimmage right now, they're easily getting three yards every time. And, you know, the impressive thing is, Goose, Nick Cole's coming in. He, he's in for Max Gene Gillis, who was filling in for Sean Andrews. And, you know, Andy was really, he was really disappointed that Max Gene Gillis went on IR with that uh, with that broken leg because he said he really started to play well over the last couple games. Second and five, Westbrook. Nothing. Nothing on that play, but it has been a huge afternoon here at the Meadowlands for Brian Westbrook. 30-yard touchdown run in the first half. 40-yard touchdown reception in the second half. 
breaks the franchise record for career yards from scrimmage. He was one of your guys at the top, Goose. That was one of your big points. He's the guy you got to ride for the postseason. If the Eagles are going to do anything this season, they're going to do it on his shoulders right there. And the Eagles have had some big December runs under the Andy Reid regime. McNabb, L.J. Smith, first down. Smith's had a big day. That is his sixth reception. Game six, and the Eagles move the chains with seven minutes remaining. They just cannot get off the field on third down. Now that's 10 of your last 11. That's the story in this game today. I'll tell you what, the Eagles, Marty Morning League has done a great job of just keeping everything short, not trying to go for the big play all the time, Offside. controlling the clock, controlling the line of scrimmage. He's done a great job of mixing it up, run, pass, and he's got the confidence of uh, this whole offense and what he's doing as we see on third down. Coming up, game two of our Fox doubleheader. Many of you will see the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Completely different team, those Cowboys with Romo back on. Huh? Darrell? Well, you get that big play threat back in their offense. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know Marion Barber is not going to play this afternoon. But Tashar Choice, it, here's a guy that the Cowboys drafted in the fourth round last year. He's got a chip on his shoulder because he slid to the fourth round. He's a good football player as a rookie. He's a tough guy, kind of out of that same, uh, cut from the same cloth as Marion Barber. The Cowboys will be the Giants' next opponent in Dallas next Sunday night. Eagles will close out the season by hosting the Cowboys. Tough sled in the NFC East down the stretch. A lot of divisional games in the month of December. Down in five, Darrell, you just mentioned Eagles have converted 10 of their last 11 on third down today. They must get to the 29. McNabb scrambling, picks up the first down. That's 11 of the last 12 for the Eagles on third down, and Donovan celebrates just five days after the birth of his twins, baby boy, baby girl. Born on Tuesday. And you wonder how much that has to do with his psyche right now, because during that little bit of struggles for Donovan McNabb, you know, even the first time the Giants and Eagles played, there were some throws I'm sure he'd like to have back. And then Cincinnati and Baltimore, just a disaster. And Goose, there's the uh, bracelets. The bracelets. Actually, yeah, that, Donovan showed me the, the two bracelets uh, of his son and daughter uh, that he's still wearing uh, on his wrist. You can see him right here. There's two for twins. The official wristbands from the hospital. Donovan's wife, Raquel, gave birth on Tuesday. They have a four-year-old daughter, Alexis, as well. You'll never get somebody to admit to it, but, but you just can't be 100% focused on what you have to do on Sundays when you've got that going on in your personal life. So, uh, you know, it, it, was a, it was a tough stretch for Donovan to come through. Obviously, you've seen the last two games what he's been able to accomplish and, and if this Eagle team gets on a roll you know they've, they've got to have some help going down the stretch but if they play like they did last week against Arizona and how they played this afternoon against the Giants now this is uh, this is a team to watch down the stretch well Dowell you would know better than anybody uh, we'll talk about it when we come back from commercial but uh, playing on Thanksgiving and getting that little bit of a break helps in the stretch Coming up tonight on Fox following the OT, the BCS Selection Show. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific right here on Fox, the All-State BCS Selection Show following football and the OT. Many of you will see the Cowboys and the Steelers. Now, barring a Giants comeback in this game, Giants can still clinch the NFC East with a loss by the Cowboys today. Giants with a win today. 
would have clinched the division and the first round by, but they could still clinch the division today should the Cowboys lose to Pittsburgh. Eagles move the chains once again with three and a half remaining. Eagles will host Cleveland next Monday night and then finish up with two divisional games. Oh, tough down the stretch. Washington, Dallas, everybody in the NFC East besides the Giants having to win out. Something's got to give. Giants had the momentum. They came out for the second half following the 71 yard block field goal return for a touchdown by Kevin Dockery. And Tony reported as the Eagles continue to move the clock. Giants called timeout. Tony reported on his conversation with Tom Coffin, but it has not paid off. The Philadelphia Eagles lead the New York Giants 17-7. Just over three minutes remaining. Second and eight from the Giants, 14-yard line. Westbrook, out of the backfield by Fred Robbins. Giants use their final timeout, 2.58 on the clock. Eagles by 10, just under three minutes remaining here at Giants Stadium. Check out the time of possession in the second half alone. Brian Westbrook with 118 yards here in the second half as Westbrook dives ahead. Even more impressive by the Eagles in this second half was the way the first half ended with that blocked field goal attempt. I mean, they're about to go in 13 nothing at halftime. All of a sudden, you've got that huge swing where it's 10 7. They come out in the second half and have just dominated this half. The, the Giants defense unable to get off the field. You heard Tom Coughlin talk to Tony Saragusa about how important the third quarter was. The Eagles took care of business there. Eagles are going to let the clock run down. And then call timeout before sending on the field goal unit. You never know what's going to happen in this situation this afternoon, though. Akers has already had two attempts blocked. Coming up on Fox, the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cowboys 8 and 4. Steelers, first place in the AFC North. They are 9 and 3. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Pam Oliver. We'll have the call, the second game of our NFL on Fox doubleheader. This is Akers from 34 yards out. From the right hash, Akers' kick is good. So the Eagles extend their lead. It is now 20 to 7. Donovan McNabb has taken care of business this afternoon. One of the things, and, and we saw it a little bit the last time these teams played, and it was something that the Giants defense was worried about. He was making some plays with his feet. He did that today, whether it was just buying a little bit of time, extending the plays, or, or actually converting some first downs on his own. And Eli Manning, you know, everybody's going to get on Eli for his numbers this afternoon. Have they been great? No, they haven't been great. But you know what? He hasn't had the support that he's had from his teammates throughout the year. The big one, the Dominic Hickson one, that's one of those ones that just kind of, you grab the momentum in the game early and you just keep using it. Madison Hedgecock out in the flat, drops one. Steve Smith with an opportunity to convert on third down, can't get it done. And then on a critical fourth down, a lot of pressure and the Eagles defended it well. It's, it's been one of those days for Eli Manning, but uh, not as much help as he's had from his supporting cast the last couple of weeks. Sonoris Moss. So with 2.04 remaining, 
Eli Manning and the Giants offense back out on the field. But first, we head to Los Angeles and Kurt Menefee. A good one going on between the Saints and the Falcons. Pierre Thomas, who has 174 total yards today, takes part in the sixth lead change of the afternoon, puts New Orleans up 29-25. Time permitting, we'll get you to, to, to the conclusion of that one down in New Orleans. Can he lose some goose? Wild one down in New Orleans. Manning on first down, complete to Derek Ward. But he is met immediately by Chris Clemens. Disappointing afternoon for the New York Giants. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Second down and eight for the Giants. Manning's throw is caught by Steve Smith in Eagles territory. 19-yard pass play. Giants are out of timeouts. On the Eagles, 49. Manning to Amani Toomer. Tackled by Quentin Michael at the 41, a gain of eight. Giants have not lost at home this year. 6-0. They have not lost within the division. 4-0. Eagles coming into the game 0-3 against NFC East opponents. It's Toomer again, a first down. Tackled at the 25-yard line as we approach one minute remaining. Well, there are a lot of indicators of, of how is Philadelphia going to pull off this game this afternoon. Everything seemed to point to the Giants, but there was a confidence within them that they were going to play against the run much better today. Steve Smith. Tackled at the 14, close to a first down. All right, Goose, I got to ask you, from a defensive player, I mean, in this situation, why don't you do what you've been doing all afternoon? I, I, I don't know, Moose. I'm looking at the same thing you are saying. Bring the pressure. Just don't rush four guys as we're seeing right now in line of scrimmage. Make Eli go and force the ball to bad throws. Right now, you're giving him time. This is, this is what he likes. He wants you to give him a lot of time back there and go and find his receivers. And uh, I don't understand why teams go to that prefense defense. Penalty marker in the end zone. Eagles indicating that it's against the Giants. Gene Steratore over for, for a chat with Andy Reid. Illegal touching. Offense number 89. The receiver was out of bounds. First to touch the forward pass. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. You know, most we talked about that prevent defense that we see the Eagles in right now. In my opinion, that prevent defense only prevents you from winning. How about that one? I, 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 I agree, Goose. I agree. It's a very profound statement. I mean, I know you can't be as aggressive because you don't want to give up something over the top in one play, you know, get caught in a zero type coverage where you're bringing pressure and everybody's man to man, but you know, they've gone right down the field here. Penalty marker. Manning looking for Tumor. Rosselio Hansen made contact with Amani Tumor. And the penalty will be called against Hansen. You've got two fouls on the play. Offside defense, number 58. The penalty is declined. Also, pass interference defense, number 21. Spot foul, automatic first down. I just, it's, it's, it, it gets caught up in the wind, and Amani Toomer stops to turn around, look back, and Jose Leo Hansen just makes contact there. That's tough. They want you to take, turn your head yeah. back to the ball. See, you know, keep your eyes on the ball. Just don't play the defender. When you do that, the defender stops. You run into him because the wind slows the ball down. Sometimes you can't catch a break. First and goal from the one. Four flags. Manning to the end zone. Touchdown, Darcy Johnson. I think Philadelphia was offsides again. Whatever information they got, whatever tip they had, <laughs> was, was bad intel. Darcy Johnson. 
Offside, defense, that penalty has declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Darcy Johnson, second career reception, his second career touchdown scored against Baltimore three weeks ago. Eli Manning, 13 completions in the game, Darrell. Six of the 13 came on that drive. Tell you what, he looks his best when he's in that two minute hurry up offense. Maybe they should have pulled that out a little bit earlier, Darrell. Well, yeah, I, I think it's what you said before, Goose. They're playing a type of defense that haven't played all afternoon. Right. Manning had been seven for 21 on that drive, six for six, 57 yards, and a touchdown. So the Giants will now line up for the onside kick as they have pulled to within six. Coming up, many of you will see the Cowboys and the Steelers or the Rams and the Cardinals. Potential bonus coverage as well of the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints. Just under two minutes remaining in New Orleans. The Saints leading 29-25. Darrell, I got to bring something up that was really interesting. You're talking about playing on Thanksgiving and getting that, you know, couple extra days to go and get the team healthy and uh, you feel that it helped you when you played with the Cowboys playing on Thanksgiving and it gave you sort of that little extra momentum into the latter end of the uh, of the season without a doubt you know it's tough getting through from Sunday to Thursday but we never had to travel which was a huge plus for us going to the game on Thursday Philadelphia didn't have to travel they get through that week but now you've got 10 days and, and to get a guy like Brian Westbrook 10 days at that time of the year I, I felt we always used it as a springboard into the month of December when you've got some critical games to win. So I, I always felt coming out of Thanksgiving that we had the advantage against our opponents down the stretch. It's almost like having two off weeks, having that little couple extra days. I mean, to an NFL player, and me and you know it, Darrell, but people out in the real world don't. Two days is like a year for a, for a player to go and have a couple days off and, and in order to go and recoup and, uh, and help some of the injuries that you get, the little nagging injuries. A little built-in by late in the year. Yeah. Nice break for the average person as well. Two extra days. Penalty marker as Sheldon Brown gathers it in. First rule: don't be offsides on the onside kick. See if that. Uh, see if that's the one flag. It looked like they were awful close to it. Offside, number 24, the kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, Philadelphia. So the Eagles will run out the clock, raise their record to 7-5-1. and one. Giants will suffer only their second loss. Terrell Thomas across the 30. Giants' <laughs> seven-game win streak will come to an end. They will suffer their first home loss, their first division loss. Great job by our entire crew, led by producer Pete Majeska, director Michael Frank, associate directors Fran Morrison, Eric Billigmeyer, associate producer Sherrod DeVascar, our technical producer Dan Rotante, technical director Chris Castro, the senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown, the executive producers Ed Gorin and David Hill. Thanks to Luke Triviani, Dave Corris, Ben Bulma, Matt Vanavick, Rick Camps, Wynn Bernfeld, Marty Clunder. Great job by our NFL on Fox crew here at the Meadowlands as the Eagles win it by the score of 20 to 14. Brian Westbrook scores both Philadelphia touchdowns. For Daryl Johnston and Tony Saragusa, this is Kenny Albert saying so long now to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles.